What is the best melee in World of Warcraft? And no, I don't mean what's the best melee right now in the current patch. I mean if you'd go back in time and start again, or if you wanted to give yourself the best chance of playing the best melee next patch, season, or even expansion, what should you reroll to? Spoiler alert, it's not rare. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a bit of a legend around these parts. I'm fearful, let's go pull up, let's go pull up. I'm fearful, Reflect it deep, baby. Reflect it again. Uh, yeah, anyway. I spent the last few days working closely with some of the greatest names in WoW PvP to rank the best melee of all time in WoW and to give you an insight into whether or not you made the right choice with your melee main, I didn't, so that you can maybe re-roll before it's too late and you spent the last decade being abused by casters on huge maps. But seriously, in case you guys don't know me, I'm Brian, also go by Mystic and Game, Rep Halden, been working behind the scenes for, it's been over 10 years of doing this stuff and I'm doing this for the first time because there have just been way too many updates to the game recently and let's cause our team to get super busy having to update all of our class guides over on our site. So our main content team, that's Will, Gelu, and Zot. No one knows what Zot looks like. Um, they've all been super busy updating all of our class guides. So I've had to come out of the woodwork and script and record a video. And I figured may as well do something a little bit different, bring in the cam, see if you guys like it. Feel free to let us know in the, in the comments if you hate my face and just want Dan to come back and do the videos. Uh, but yeah, with the 11.05 patch, I know how much time Gelu, Big Moran, and Zot are spending doing all of the updates for the class guides. So if you guys are interested, be sure to go check us out. Link in the description below, money back guarantee. But yeah, for now, let's get into it. Coming in at last place are Survival Hunters, which may be a shock to many of you. After all, they can pretty much do everything. CC, check. Mobility, check. Survival, check. Mortal Strike effect, check. Damage, uh, kind of. See, despite survival having one of the broadest toolkits in all of WoW, what it lacks is probably the defining feature of an OP spec, finishing power. It's all well and good if you can constantly set up kills, keep yourself alive, always hit your target, but if you can't actually score kills, then what's the point? Playing against a survival hunter just doesn't feel dangerous, I guess. I'm not sure how else to put it. It's like the spec's damage profile is too slow or something, so you never quite feel like you're dying in the same you would when you're getting absolutely trucked by some of the classes we've got higher up on this list. A natural consequence to this lack of finishing power is the lack of comp variety available to survival hunters. You would think that a melee with almost every tool in the game in their spellbook would have one of the most versatile comp selections, but that simply isn't the case. At best, survival hunters have maybe two or three good comps in 3v3. That point alone should go a long way to proving that survival just doesn't live up to its potential. Now, a little caveat here is that survival is actually incredible in twos, and it's even pretty great in solo shuffle. But do you know the difference between those brackets and the more structured 3v3 and competitive AWC format? Everyone's best friend, dampening. See, with dampening, survival hunters can be a menace. Their lack of finishing power becomes less of a problem because the game just wants to finish itself off. Who wrote this? Um, <laughs> I worry, I read this. But this video just isn't about which is the best melee in twos or shuffle. We want to know what the best melee of all time is. And while survival has simply been outshone by its stronger and sexier big brothers, beast mastery and marksmanship, the hunter class as a whole has done excellent on the big stage recently with several tournament wins. However, survival just hasn't seen the same success. That is of course outside of the one guy that would never agree with ranking survival in last place. Oh no, I don't have mental damage, no. Next, and as much as it pains me to say it, we've got Rhett Paladins in at number 8. Now, before some of you lose your minds seething at the idea that Rhett somehow isn't near the top of this list, stay with me on this. While there have been moments, and I really do mean moments, where Rhett has been a force to be reckoned with, we cannot allow those moments to overshadow the truth that Rhett just generally is not a great spec for WoW PvP. Outside of Vanguard's limited run of Rhett DK domination back in Cataclysm, the spec has basically seen little to no tournament success. I think in recent years, the best placements would have been my top fours in the 2021 spring and summer AWC, and some ridiculous counter combing by Swapsy back in Legion, when Rhett had a talent that literally deleted Acerogues from the arena. But that's about it. Even when arguably the best Rhett in the world managed to win BlizzCon, I don't think he played a single game of Rhett. Anyway, the thing about Rhett is that while it can be considered by most as the ultimate cleave machine anti-melee automated turret system, it is simply horrendous into most casters, which ultimately makes it difficult for the spec to consistently do well on a large scale. So yes, any warriors and rogues out there crying that I'm saying the ret that was one-shotting them in Shadowlands and Dragonflight is somehow worse than your class, it's not because of you, okay? It's because of us. Until you know what it feels like to be a rep held in facing two classes in Tolverod for 25 minutes, you do not know true pain. But yeah, the spec is exceptional into opposing melee, there's no denying that. It has a toolkit that you almost feel is built to just be anti-melee, but the need to play for your life against casters really outweighs just how good the matchups can be against other melee. 
Comp options are another issue for the spec as a whole, where it basically needs to have a partner with a model strike effect or the comp just straight up won't work for the majority of people. And even then, we've basically only ever seen Rhett's excel with Hunters back in the Wrath to Ward era, and more recently with Warriors in the last few years. Yes, Rhett has done alright with some other classes, but I'm talking in a more general sense where Rhett just requires a spec to babysit them. They needed the Hunter insane instant healer CC or nothing would die. They needed the Warriors defensive toolkit and constant pressure to get something out of their burst. Alone, the Rhett is weak, but in the right meta and with the right partners, they're more like an annoying mosquito that doesn't stop sucking when you slap. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have a spec which a lot of you are probably surprised wasn't lower on this list, Enhancement Shamans. Right off the bat, Enhance has been pretty miserable to play for a while now. It's consistently been ranked quite low on our tier lists and has just been a really underwhelming spec, but we cannot deny the fact that when an expansion has been suited to what Enhance brings, it has been an incredible spec. Going all the way back to 2015, Enhancement actually won BlizzCon two years in a row, first with its most iconic comp, Turbo, and then with a mixture of Enhanced Lock and Beast Cleave in 2016. Although it's hard to give too much credit to Enhanced for that showing in 2016, given that it was a BlizzCon that transitioned from WAD to Legion, and typically those BlizzCons were a giant mess. Even so, Enhanced continued to do exceptionally well during BFA, showing up high rating on their 3v3 ladder and being piloted to successful tournament placings throughout the expansion. Unfortunately, that success is just a small part of the bigger picture, as Enhanced suffers the same fate as Rhett, just in reverse, where it can be considered by some as one of the best anti-caster specs thanks to all of its disruption. This is especially true when the Enhanced faces just one caster, so in opposing melee caster comps. These sort of matchups can be quite favourable for the Enhance, even when the spec itself isn't so dominant. You can imagine then that when the spec has the kind of damage profile that you want to see in PvP, that you get to enjoy quack moments like these, and that the spec can be incredibly dominant across an entire season, or even expansion. Unfortunately though, it's very rare to see Enhance performing like this these days, leaving Enhance mains at the mercy of their damage profile for any given season, or sometimes even expansion. The spec itself is also very one-dimensional. While it's true that it can be an excellent counter to casters, it has poor mobility, it lacks a model strike effect, it gets bullied and outcleaved by other melee, and it heavily relies on having the right partners. Much like Rhett, Enhance struggles with comp variety, and we've pretty much only seen Enhance perform well on a large scale with Warriors, although there have been some moments where it's done well with Hunters. Wow, well, and down goes Ben Ruki! Headshot, and that'll do it! But again, outside of a few outliers, it's basically been restricted to playing with Warriors for quite some time now. So yeah, with a severe lack of comp flexibility and with just how easy the spec is to bully, it's hard to justify ranking it any higher, despite the successes it's had in the tournament scene. In 6th place we have Death Knights, who are without a doubt the biggest anti-caster melee, to the point that a DK even managed to win BlizzCon against the Caster Cleave while playing with a Holy Paladin, which most players would consider the worst healer against casters. DKs are quite interesting, because when they have strong comps, they're great, I mean really great, but outside of those times, they're really just a mediocre class that doesn't excel at much. Now some of you may have noticed that each melee we've covered so far fall into the support category, which honestly is one of the main reasons we can't rank them any higher. Just like Survival Hunters, Rep Paladins, and Enhancement Shamans, DKs have fluctuated a lot in relative power over the years, and have been highly dependent on comps like TSG back in the Wrath era, or more recently, Windwalker DK and DHDK to do well. This was really just down to its partners being somewhat broken at the time, and the DK toolkit just being a really good fit. I mean, think about Windwalker Monks and Demon Hunters. What do they both have in common? It's an AoE stun. And what do DKs bring? Death Grip. So it's natural that if Windwalkers and Demon Hunters are crushing it in the meta, that a DK can be the perfect partner for them. And that's just it. DKs are not the lead singer of the band, they're like the bass player that no one cares about. They play an integral part to these comps, and these comps really wouldn't function without them, but that's pretty much it. Although they do have an excellent snare, and their mobility has gotten better over the years, it's still not amazing, and their ability to close out games and be threatening as an individual class entirely relies on Blizzard allowing their cooldown stacking to peter on the brink of OP. Whenever their cooldown stacking is toned down, they return to where they've always been, a class that relies on teammates to win games for them, while they offer as much support and disruption as possible. So yeah, DKs are definitely a solid melee, but only when they're supporting someone that needs them. Next in 5th place, we have Windwalker Monks. This class was piloted to a BlizzCon win back in 2017 as Windwalker Mage, and even had a ridiculous unbeaten run of nearly 50 games or something crazy like that in the EU AWC during BFA. Windwalker Monks are an interesting class to rank, because they have a pretty wide range of tools. In fact, they're pretty similar to a spec we haven't covered yet, which is Demon Hunters. Just like a DH, their ability to set up goes is pretty great, as they can stun multiple targets with one global, and they can CC an off-target with an instant. The one advantage that Windwalker Monks do have over DHs is that their stun is physical, meaning it can't be dispelled. Their mobility is also essentially unmatched by any other melee, giving them the flexibility to stay in and blast while being unkiteable, or employ more of a hit and run playstyle if they prefer. 
Their defensive kit is also really underrated, and they can actually be one of the most annoying classes in the game to kill, with relatively short cooldown magic and physical damage reduction, an actual immunity, and the ability to just peace out when things get rough. It can be very challenging to kill a skilled Windwalker monk. And at times, their burst has also been second to none. We even had to make an entire video about it back in Shadowlands to showcase how ridiculous things had gotten. The class basically always does well, even when it's not a meta-defining spec, it still always finds a comp to do well with on the ladder, and that's just the nature of having such a well-rounded toolkit, that at least one other good spec is going to pair well with you in any given season. We've seen Windwalkers excel on the ladder and in tournaments with classes like Mages, Warlocks, Elemental Shamans, among others, and we've seen it do just as well, if not better, with melee cleaves like Windwalker DK, Windwalker DH, and even with a Rogue. Windwalkers can wear many hats. They can be the Bruiser, relentlessly chasing their target with the DK on their team, they can be the setup kings, rotating targets with their caster teammate, or they can be a goddamn rat that just runs away for an entire minute in between leg sweeps. Either way, there's always something a windwalker can play to find relative success. Moving into fourth place, we have Demon Hunters. Now, I imagine many of you are confused that Demon Hunter doesn't have its own separate god mode cheats enabled category where it's just ranked separately to every other melee, but stay with me on this, there's a pretty good reason why DH isn't higher up on this list. While it's true that Demon Hunters have basically always been an A or S tier melee since they were introduced to the game back in Legion, it's always been a spec that's sort of great at everything, but not the best at one particular thing. Except maybe for its mobility. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous that their rotation literally keeps them on their target. It's this lack of a defining feature that stops Demon Hunters from truly being one of the best ever melee. When considering where its successes have come from in tournaments, there are obviously two extreme examples. The most notable of which is when one of the founding fathers of WoW Arena got his BlizzCon win with DH Boomkin. Now as much as we'd like to give praise to the Demon Hunter being the main reason for that championship, if you were put on the receiving end of a DH Boomy pump back then, you would know it was the Boomkin's cooldowns and their ability to slow the game down in between them that really brought it home. It's a similar story for the second comp which Demon Hunters had a ton of success with, DHDK. This comp prided itself on being one of the most obnoxious, never-ending streams of damage and uptime while the DH just mana burned the healer on CD. It truly felt like a do-nothing and win comp that was exceptionally frustrating to play against. But again, the DH wasn't the star of the show. It felt more like it was a match made in heaven where each member had their own really important job to do, as without the DK ensuring that healers couldn't drink, the comp's main strategy wouldn't work. Now, with all that being said, Demon Hunters are definitely where the line between a support melee and a pillar of the team starts to blur a little. First of all, they have a Mortal Strike effect, which is a key element for building a comp around a given spec. And unlike each of our previous entries, Demon Hunters have also done well on the ladder with numerous comps, each differing in style and win conditions, ranging from the aforementioned DH Boomy and DH DK comps, to things like DH Lock and DH Ellie throughout Dragonflight, and then DH Windwalker and DH Warrior and BFA. The spec has proven to be incredibly versatile, and it's no secret that it's one of the easiest melee or easiest classes in general to play in the game. And given how strong it's been in the S tier, A tier since its inception, apart from maybe recently, I feel like it's safe to justify that it can be in the fourth spot. Now we come to the top three melee of all time, with Feral Druids getting the bronze. Feral Druids are probably the most unique spec in the game, and they probably have the widest toolkit available to any class. Their damage profile is a mixture of both sustain and burst. They have an MS, they have stuns, they have off heals, they have numerous defensive cooldowns to rotate through, some being best used preemptively, others being best used as a recovery tool. They have stances to shift around, they can completely shut down an enemy kill attempt that they managed to bear from before being stunned. They can jump around the map, they can sprint, they can't be rooted, and the kicker? They have spammable CC, probably the most OP thing a class can have in WoW PvP. So the real question is, what can't Ferals do? And while the answer is, they can pretty much do it all. And it's this incredibly vast toolkit that has allowed Feral to consistently perform at the highest level in WoW PvP for more than a decade with a single comp, Jungle Cleave. See, unlike some of the other melee in this list where I stated that we couldn't rank them higher due to their comp inflexibility, that doesn't matter for Feral Druids, because jungle just has that much synergy. Even when the spec isn't great, and to be honest, even when Hunters and Discs and Rasta Shamans are not that good, the comp will still find its way somewhere near the top of the ladder just because of how dynamic it is. It has the tools to play a long game, it has the tools to play a short game, it has every CCDR available to it. It's probably the second most iconic comp in WoW's recent history if you really think about it. The classic era of WoW saw the comp as being closer to an A tier, but ever since Legion, it's basically been an S tier comp in at least one season per expansion. We've even seen Jungle win the AWC a couple times, to the dismay of a certain player we'll be talking about a bit later on. But Jungle isn't the only comp Ferals have done well with. Feral Mage has done well, and we've even seen Ferals dominate in melee cleaves such as Kitty. But Jungle just has such insane synergy, and Ferals are just so incredibly versatile that it will basically always be a competitive spec. Trapped again. Oh my hell, just left. This brings us to just two melee left. Now, not to spoil, but I definitely expect the number one spot to be somewhat controversial among newer players, but for now, let's talk about the number two spot, Warriors. Warriors are what someone thinks of when they think of a strong melee. 
a hunk of meat just rushing in and crushing everyone while requiring very few brain cells to accomplish said feat. But the reality is very different. Warriors have a lot more nuance to them than the untrained eye is able to see. Their toolkit, while limited by somewhat long cooldowns, is extremely powerful when put into the right hands. It's also incredibly versatile in that it can be used either offensively, defensively, or both. It's kind of hard to articulate why it is this way, but there's just something about a warrior's damage profile and its ability to dictate the pace of the game that really makes it shine. So much so that comps have been built around warriors since the dawn of arena. This began because warriors were basically the only class with a mortal strike effect, hence why to this day everyone still refers to healing debuffs as MS or mortal strike. Even when it became homogenized and many other classes were also given a mortal strike, warriors were still made to be the MS class through the more potent sharp and blade reduction for arms, which is literally a win condition on its own, or a slaughterhouse for fury. A brief history lesson will show that Warriors had some of the strongest comps of all time in each expansion, with WLD and TBC, TSG and Thundercleave and Wrath, KFC at the start of Kata, KFC and Warrior Mage Druid and Mop, Turbo and Wad where it won BlizzCon, WLD and Turbo and Legion, Warrior Mage and Turbo and BFA, Warrior Mage and Ret Warrior in Shadowlands, and Ret Warrior and War DH in Dragonflight. In each of these comps, the Warrior is able to be both the killer and the savior at the same time. There's something about a well-timed bladestorm to avoid CC, into a fear to stop a go, into a stormbot to secure the kill that really captures the essence of what a warrior is all about, and how much of a carry class they can be given the right conditions. As one of the few melee with more than one world championship, it's hard to look past warriors as the defining melee of World of Warcraft. That is of course until you look at the absolute abomination of a class that is rogues in first place. Where do I even begin? Since Serena was introduced into the game, no class has dominated as much as rogues. But the interesting thing is that this probably isn't because of the reasons you're thinking of. I mean sure, there have been times where Sub could 100-0 someone in a cheap shot, or Asa could 1v3 your whole team and kill you at the same time, or Outlaw, okay don't get me started on Outlaw, I don't know what Blizzard were smoking when they decided to bring CDR into the game, but some iterations of Outlaw have been almost comical with their ability to literally stun people for over 10 seconds, CC your entire team while also being an absolute unit themselves, yeah, but these instances of rogues being broken are not the reason they're the number one melee of all time. No, what actually makes rogues the best melee of all time is actually casters. See, the nature of melee being, well, melee, means that they all share a common fault that casters do not. They need to be in melee range to deal damage. This means melee have to sacrifice defense, as in their position, for offense. This naturally makes casters the more dominant of the two role, just from purely a theoretical standpoint, as they're not limited by the positioning flaws of melee. And what do rogues do? They let casters cast. In fact, no other class in the game is better than a rogue at complementing a caster's toolkit and just letting them cast. Just look at this clip, where Waz controls the entire team and enables Channel to literally do 1 million DPS in this opener. With any other partner, Channel would be cooked here, probably struggling to get a single cast off for the first part of the game, but not with a rogue. Historically, the best caster in the game at any given time has either been a mage or a warlock, and so it should be no surprise that rogue mage and rogue lock has been one of the best, if not the best comp in the game, in nearly every expansion. And this isn't just limited to mages and warlocks. Going all the way back to TBC and into the modern era of WoW, rogues when paired with a caster have won a ridiculous number of tournaments. Rogues have seen incredible success in both ladder and tournament play with mages, locks, shadow priests, Ellie shamans, and boomkins. Whatever the best caster is at the time, you can bet that pairing a rogue with it will create an S tier comp. And it's not just because they can cast. Rogues generally make the game easier for everyone. After all, you're a lot harder to kill when a rogue is helping control the game, and so this just naturally makes the game easier as there's less pressure on the caster, and a caster that's free is a caster that can win the game on their own. The same cannot be said for any other melee. And so yeah, that's our tier list of the best melee of all time. I hope you guys liked it, and if you did, I'd appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. And like I said, this is my first time doing a video like this, so yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more like this, or if we should just stick to letting uh, Ezreal do the videos. Also, if you guys subscribe, it might help out with um, our budget. You know, the green screen I'm using right now is attached by some hangers up there. And so, you know, we're really low budget right now, and it would be great if you guys <laughs> would, uh, would subscribe.